Hey guys, this is Mr. Mahmood, and you are watching Cells Lecture 2. This is really kind of a mini lecture on the basic workings and how to properly use a compound microscope. Uh, this is the first unit where you're actually going to be using one, and you'll more than likely be using it quite a few times over the course of the year and for the rest of your science career. So it's very important that you understand the basic components of a compound microscope, how will they work together, and how to make sure you use this properly, uh, both to get the image that you're looking for and to make sure you don't cause any damage to the equipment in the process. Uh, so when I say compound microscope, I mean that there are multiple lenses in the process of actually seeing what you're looking at and magnifying the image. If you look at a, something with a hand lens, or like a, a typical magnifying lens, that's what we consider a simple microscope, because it's a single lens that does make something slightly larger. It'll typically accent something maybe to be double its size or something in that range. So uh, that's what we consider a simple microscope. When you think about a compound microscope, we're going to be talking about more than one lens, all allowing you to see an image. So there are multiple lenses in the process and in the way, and each lens is going to magnify the image before it. So what you end up looking at is significantly larger than it really is. All right, so let's get focused on the actual structure here, the microscope, and talk about each individual piece. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the basic compound microscope that you're going to be using in your classrooms. Now, some of the models may look a little bit different than this, but a lot of them have the same basic components. Let's start with how this kind of microscope actually works. It all starts with the ability of allowing light to physically pass through the image. So the base here, this is what we consider the base, the bottom part of the microscope, it actually has a, uh, a lamp or a light that's available in here. So when I go to turn it on, I have, I have it plugged in first. You always want to make sure it's off when you're actually plugging it in so you don't short the bulb. So I want to make sure the off switch is on, plug it in first, then I push the on switch and you'll see a light turns on from underneath. So this light is actually going to be the light that's going to allow you to see an image. Obviously just like anything else, if you want to see something, light has to get to your eyes and your eyes have to recognize that light in order to connect to the brain. So this is where the light is coming from. This is the light that's going to allow your brain to actually register what you're looking at. So the light actually passes in from the bottom and it's very important you understand that because if you're wanting to make sure that light ends up in your eye so you can see what you're looking at, you understand it has to actually pass through what you're looking at here on the stage. So we have the light bulb here at the bottom. On the stage here, this, this piece in the middle, this is where you're actually going to put your slide. This is where you're going to put what you're looking at. Now the problem is it has to be able to allow light to pass through. If you're looking at something that's too thick, light can't pass through, and then if you're looking at the top end here through the ocular lens, uh, you're just going to see a black image, and that's going to uh, be a problem, obviously, in trying to see what you're looking for. So the only way that you can use this kind of a compound microscope, because the light is coming from underneath, is to make sure that what you're looking at is at least a little transparent. Transparent means you can see through it. What you're looking at has to be thin enough of, an, of a piece of tissue or a piece of anything to allow enough light to pass through so you can actually see what you're looking at. So the light bulb is at the bottom here in the base. The light is going to come up through the middle of the stage. Now if you look at the microscope itself, the base here actually has a tiny little hole. And I'll see if I can move the lens here so you can see. The slide here actually has a tiny little hole. This opening in the stage is what allows the light to pass through. This opening can be controlled by something called a diaphragm. The diaphragm is found right here on the bottom side of the stage. Now depending on the piece of uh, equipment that you have, this light is going to be able to be controlled through a couple of different ways. Again, this is what's considered a diaphragm. This diaphragm can control the size of the opening on the stage, which in turn controls the, the intensity of the light that's allowed to pass through. If the diaphragm is all the way open, then all of the light will be able to pass through as much as possible. But if I turn this little lever, it'll slowly close the amount of light that's available to go through. So I'll show you on this side. Here's how it looks when it's open. And then as I close it, it closes the amount of light that can pass through. So what you see happening, it can, and as I close it, it closes the amount of light that can pass through. So this is what's going to be important if, if I'm trying to look for something. It's, a, it's important that I let the light pass through so I can see the image. But it's also important not to let the light overpower the image. Because if it's too bright of a light, all you're going to see is a white screen, which is equally problematic. So it's very important you find that balance. And that's what this diaphragm is for. So you rotate the diaphragm. 
to get it to have the slightest, just the perfect opening so that the right amount of light is passing through so that's enough to go through the image, but not so much that it overpowers the image that you're looking for. So this is what we consider the diaphragm. And this model, and a lot of the ones you're gonna be seeing, it's a lever that you, you use left and right. Some microscopes may have sort of a tab that you see here at the top and the front of the stage. You just rotate it left and right. It might be numbered one through five. Five is the largest opening, and therefore the highest light intensity. One would be the lowest opening. So either by turning a little knob here at the front of the stage or the lever here underneath the stage, one or the other, either one of these is what we consider the diaphragm, and it, it controls the intensity of the light that passes through the stage and ultimately up to the eyepiece. All right, so here we have the, uh, the stage. We have the diaphragm underneath. On the stage itself is where you put your slide. Now this type of model has a few mechanical pieces here to make what you're looking at a little bit easier. You'll notice that there's a little hook here so that if I was looking at a slide, I have an example here. This is of what's called rhizopistolonifer. You guys will know what this is when we get to fungi and talk about it a little bit. But I'll take this slide and in it, if this was an older model microscope, you'd have little stage hooks, little clamps, they had to kind of hook onto each side of this to hold it still. So you were looking at it and then if you ever needed to move it, you'd have to manually kind of push it around with your own fingers and move the stage clips around to get it in place, which obviously can get very difficult when you're trying to look at really specific images because the slightest nudge will knock it completely out of your field of view. Now, the more modern ones and a lot of the ones you'll probably be working with have a lot of these devices to help you out. So there's actually a stage setup here that'll have a perfect position for the slide. So there's a little hook here and there's a little handle here on the left side. If you see this, let me turn it. A little handle here on the left side that you just pull. And by pulling the handle, it opens up the space that allows for the slide to come in. So let me turn it a little so you can see it. If I turn this hook just a little bit, it opens up the space that's on the stage and then I can bring my slide in. You'll notice how the other side here actually has a perfectly rectangular position for these microscope slides. These slides are standard size. So if I allow the slide to flush in here against the edge and then close the hook on the other side, then what you're left with is a perfectly controlled image and it's gonna be held in place by the hook that's on this side and the metal that's on the other. So when I go to actually wanna move things left, right, up and down, I'm not gonna do it manual anymore. I'm actually gonna use these little knobs. And there are two little knobs here that'll go either vertically or horizontally in terms of movement. So this one will allow a horizontal movement, like you can see, and this one vertical, up and down. Now to save you a little time, you're wanting to try to make sure that what you're looking at is right there where the light is passing through. So you can try to do this by looking, or you can just physically, before you get your eye into the eye lens and really try to find what you're looking for, look from the side and you see where that light is, that's where you want to try to get the piece of the image that you're hoping to see much more clearly. And a lot of times when you're looking at the slides, they have a little bit of a color already. You just don't really know what the detail is yet. If you can just get that color right there in the middle of, your, of the stage, right in the middle of the light opening in the diaphragm, then you're all set to go because you know that that's the point that you want the slide to be in. Then it's just a matter of focusing to get yourself there. So we have the stage set up. We have this going and we know how to get things moving left and right and get, get it positioned exactly the way we want. So now let's talk about how to actually focus and how these lenses work together. We have, as you can see, multiple lenses to work with here. This area here gives you the variety of objective lenses. There are three typical objective lenses when you're using a compound microscope. Some, uh, the brand that you see here has a yellow, followed by a blue and a white. Now other microscopes may have a red in this first position, then a yellow, and then a blue. Either way, it really doesn't matter because for the purpose of what we're doing in biology, all we care about are the yellow and blue objectives. That's where we're gonna spend the most amount of time. So each one of these has its own magnification because it has its own strength of a lens. But at the same time, we also have a lens up here at the top with our eyepiece. This eyepiece is also known as the ocular lens. So this eyepiece on its own has a magnification of itself. So let's start at the top and work our way down. This eyepiece, if I just had it by myself, by itself, and I would just use it to try to look for something, this eyepiece would have its own objective of 10x. 
Whenever I say something is a number followed by an X, that means it's magnified by that many times. So if I use this eyepiece by itself and looked at something, it would be 10 times larger than it actually is. So by itself, it's already a 10X, so 10 times magnification. Then as you move down the, the, the base of this eyepiece bar here, there's actually a mirror right here that will allow whatever image you're looking at here and down to match up. So there's a little mirror here that's kind of diagonally positioned so that it bounces whatever the image is and all that light will bounce in the right direction to get where it needs to go. And so that's how we get from this angled lens bounce down straight down. Now when you bounce straight down there are these other objective lenses for you to work with as well. And again there was a red piece that, you're, that some microscopes may have. The red piece by itself has a 4x magnification. So that means if you use the red piece by itself, it would be four times larger than anything else. So let's say hypothetically this one had a red piece and had a red objective. That red piece, if it was pointing straight down, would be four times larger than what you're looking at passing through here. And then before it got to your eye, whatever you were just looking at would now be ten times bigger than it was. So combined, you have a four times larger and a 10 times larger. You don't add them, it's not 14. It's in fact 40 times larger than it was before because this image is already four times larger than before by the time it hits here. And now it's gonna be 10 times larger than four, which means 40. So this is gonna be a 40X if I use a red objective lens with my eyepiece. Now if I go to the yellow, this is the one we consider the low power objective. Low power is going to be the yellow objective. Always remember that. So if I use low power objective, this objective by itself has a 10x magnification. Just like the eyepiece. It has the exact same strength. So if this one's 10x by itself, and you have to keep in mind that whatever you're looking at is getting seen by the eyepiece as well, it's 10x times 10x, or ultimately 100 times larger than what it actually is. So when you're using the low power objective, keep in mind whatever you're looking at is a hundred times larger than it really is. And then finally, when we have this blue magnification, the blue objective down here, this one on its own is 40x. 40x. That means it's 40 times larger than actual image just with this eyepiece alone. That, remember, that's what the red one is, including the eyepiece. That means it's 40 times larger. Whatever you're looking at is 40 times larger than it normally is just with this objective lens by itself. This one is 40x, and then keep in mind you're also having to pass it through the eyepiece. So you're taking the 40x image, multiplying that by 10. So that means what you're looking at under the blue objective is actually 400 times larger than normal. This is the one we consider the high power objective. So remember that. The yellow is what we consider low power. It's 100x, including the eyepiece. And the blue is the high objective. It's 400 times larger. It's 400x. So these are the two magnifications that we'll use most of the time in a biology classroom. Now there is one higher one, and you have to be very careful using this one, because you'll notice with each objective lens, the lenses are a little longer. They need to be a little longer because of their strength. So by the time you get to the last one, this white one, if your microscope has it, it's actually significantly long. So I'm going to pull the base down all the way to the bottom just to make sure there's nothing to worry about. It's really standard practice. Anytime you're moving the lenses, you should make sure your base is all the way down as far as it'll go, down as close as it can to the stage to avoid scratching the lens or the, the slide itself. And now if I go all the way to the white, this white magnification is actually 100x by itself. So this one white objective by itself is 100 times, makes, makes an image 100 times larger. And then you factor in the eyepiece and we're looking at a thousand times magnification, which is significant. It's actually usually more significant than we need. So we rarely are going to use this final objective. When you do use this objective, it's actually recommended that you're using an immersion oil and a type of oil because the likelihood is this uh, objective lens, because of its length, is probably going to come in contact with what you're looking at. So by putting an immersion oil there, you're making it capable of doing that without any worry of actually scratching the lens. And at the same time, anytime you're using these microscopes and you feel like there's something on any of these lenses or the eyepiece itself, never wipe it with any sort of random uh, paper towel or tissue or anything like that. Always make sure you use a piece of lens paper which can be provided to you by your teacher. So if you ever need to wipe any sort of a glass piece on the actual microscope itself, 
ask your teacher for a piece of lens paper and they'll take care of that for you and just wipe it briefly make sure you don't use your fingers and actually get your fingers on it but use the lens paper directly and it takes care of anything you really need all right okay so all of the magnifications are available for you so let's say i wanted to actually look at something you want to always start at your lowest power objective. That can be the red if you have a red one, but most of the time, most teachers would say it's fine to go ahead and start with your low power objective, which is here in the yellow. When you're using the low power objective, you always want to make sure you're using the coarse adjustment knob. You'll notice there are two knobs here. There's a large one and a small one. The coarse adjustment knob is the larger of the two. This is the one that will have a significant effect on the movement of the stage. So let's say I move the stage the course objective knob, watch what happens to the stage. You can physically see it moving up and down because this course adjustment knob has a significant amount of movement in terms of what you're looking at. Okay, So this course adjustment knob will help you focus clearly. Now anytime you're looking to actually focus, you'll start it with the, all the way down at the base, point the adjustment knob in the eyepiece towards you. It's always recommended that you don't close one eye. I know it's kind of the common practice, uh, but you could get a headache or things that way. It's always encouraged to keep both eyes open and just cover one eye with your hand. And then you look straight ahead. Now while you're looking, you're going to slowly, very slowly, bring the course adjustment knob, rotate it so that the stage slowly moves up. And you do this just slowly enough and keep your eyes open the whole time because there will be a point where the focus is great and you're going to be able to see exactly what you're looking for. Again, that's if you've already kind of adjusted it to be in the proper position to make sure the light is passing through exactly where you're trying to find an image. So once you've gotten that clear focus, you want to stop. You never want to touch that course adjustment knob again for that slide. Once you've gotten your focus on low power with your course adjustment knob, you're not going to touch that course adjustment knob again. That's fine if you want an image that's at that size, but let's say I wanted something that's a little more focused than even that, a little, little higher magnification. Then I can take this image and then carefully, looking to make sure I don't actually get close to scratching the lens, go to my high power objective. Now here's the biggest problem, and here's where the most damage of a microscope can occur. And most commonly, this is where the damage can occur. If I go to my high power objective here, and I'm not paying attention. I go back to focusing on the eyepiece, and then I go straight to the course adjustment knob. What do you think might happen? Exactly. The stage might slide up way too far, smash into my lens, and now I have a serious problem with a possible scratch or a crack in the lens, which can be very expensive to replace. So this is something we definitely want to avoid. That's why when I tell you, you go away from that low objective, and you move to the high power, never touch the course adjustment knob. Once you're at high power, you've already gotten this exactly where it wants to be. Your focus is done with this. Now to get the really fine-tuned adjustment and make it a really detailed focus exactly the way you want, that's what the second knob is for. This is what we call the fine adjustment knob. So the fine adjustment knob is used on uh, the objective lens that's blue, which is the high power objective. So once you've gotten to the low power objective, you've gotten a clear focus using the course adjustment knob, move to the blue or the high power, and then use the fine adjustment knob from there to get your specifics. If you ever lose the image and you're at high power, don't try to find it at high power. That's like trying to find something in a very small range. If you ever lose something, take a step back, try to figure out where you are again, and then reset. So that's what I encourage you to do here. If you ever did lose the image, go back to your low power, use the course adjustment knob, refocus where you need to be to get it back to normal, then move to your high power, and then use the fine adjustment knob to get your little tiny details to go. Now you'll notice with the fine adjustment knob, when I move it back and forth, you can't see the stage moving because it's a very slight change. And that's why you're encouraged to use it when you're on high power. You don't really see much of a difference if you're on low and you're using the fine adjustment knob. Focus with the course adjustment knob first on low power, then go to the high power with the fine adjustment knob. All right, and then once you have your image, you try to draw what you see. Now because of the way the microscope is set up, you're not going to see an image exactly like you wanted to or exactly like it is in real life. Uh, the reality is because of the mirror images that you're seeing, there are a few mirrors in terms of how things are brought back to you, what you're looking at is often uh, different than what it is in real life. Just like if you looked in a mirror, when you look in a mirror you see a reflection coming back to you. It's not exactly the way other people may see you. They see you in the normal frame, what you see is a mirror image of yourself. And that's actually what you're going to be seeing in a microscope as well, is a mirror image. And that comes important when it comes time to try to follow something. If you're looking at something that's actually living, really small but living, and you're trying to follow it moving left and right, moving all over the place, you have to keep in mind that when you're moving your slide, 
what you think is happening is actually the opposite. So because of the mirror image effect, when you look in a microscope and the image in your vision, in your field of view, looks like it's going left, in reality, it's going right. So if it looks like it's going left, it's actually going right. If it looks like it's going right, it's actually going left. So what you need to do is compensate the opposite way. So if you're looking in the microscope, you see an image that looks like in your field of view that it's going left, you're actually going to move your slide in the same direction as the molecule is moving. And I know that goes against everything you've ever learned since you were a toddler. If something is moving to the left, you want to move it right to get it back to normal. But because something that looks like it's going left is actually going right, to get it back to normal, you're going to have to go in the same direction that it looks like it's moving. And that's going to take some practice, but you will get good at that. You'll, you'll, you'll get to the point where you can do that really well. So if you see an image that's moving in a direction, move your slide in the same direction, and it should get things back to normal. Now whether you're going up and down really depends on one thing, and it's how you use this top ocular lens. If you're looking at it where it's pointed towards the back of the microscope, like this, then it's the exact same opposite. So if it looks like something is moving up, it's actually moving down. If it looks like it's moving down, it's actually moving up. So if I have an image that looks like it's going up in my field of view, I'm going to pull my slide up to keep myself able to view it, to get it back to normal. Now the opposite is true is if I turn this lens like this. If you use the, the microscope this way, and you're looking from this side point, the up and down actually is real. It's, it's in real time. So even though the left and right thing still applies, if it looks like it's going left, you move to the left. If it looks like it's going right, you move to the right. In this case, because you've turned it to this side, if it looks like it's going up, it actually is going up. So then you just pull it down just like it was back to normal, just like you're trying to bring anything back to the field of view. So it's just the left and right you have to worry about if you're looking at it this way. If you prefer to look at it this way, then you are worried about both left, right, up, and down. Everything's backwards. So if it looks like it's going up, it's really going down. So you would move the slide up in the same direction. So again, this is confusing. But just remember, if you're looking at it like this, with the lens to the back of the slide, the back of the microscope like this, you're going to move it in the direction that it's already moving to get it back to normal. So if it's moving up, you go up. If it's moving left, you go left. If it's moving up to the right, you go up to the right, and it'll get things back to normal. So this is usually the way I encourage my kids to do it, just to stay consistent with that idea. If you're looking at it like this, and you see a molecule moving in a direction, you move the slide in the same direction, which again goes against everything you've ever learned, but I promise you, it'll work out for you. So that's about it for the compound microscope. You know the basics. You know you have your eyepiece with the 10x magnification. You have your three objective lenses here to identify all the different types of... Uh, magnification that you can come up with. Each one magnifies times 10 with the eyepiece, so you get either 100x with a low power or 400 with a high power, the two you really need to worry about. You have your coarse adjustment knob, which is only for the, uh, the low power objective movements, the one when you have the yellow uh, objective lens, and you have the fine adjustment knob, which is only used for the high power to make sure you're not going to cause any damage to the slides or the microscope, or that you just don't lose your image. So you want to make sure you always use the yellow, uh, you always use the coarse adjustment knob for low power, fine adjustment knob for high power. And then you have the stage itself and understand how the lighting works. So the light actually comes from underneath. So it's very important that what you're looking at is thin enough that light can pass through it. But you don't want to overpower the image with too much light. So you have to find that middle ground, that perfect balance. And again, that's what the diaphragm is for, to help you find that balance of just the right amount of light to go through the image and really be able to see the image that you're looking for. Now, very quickly, the other comparison to this, besides a compound microscope, you may be using something called a stereoscope. And a stereoscope doesn't have the same uh, scenario where the light is coming through an image in order for you to see it. It's basically just a really strong magnifying lens. It just has a big stage at the bottom that may have a light for itself, but you're pretty much just looking at whatever you're placing on top of that stage from the top. And so the light of the room and then any other light that's there is what you're using to help find the image. So you can actually see something that doesn't need to be cut thin. Light doesn't have to pass through it in order for you to see it because you're just looking at it from the top. This compound microscope, the light is going through the image directly and then into your eyepiece. So it has to be able to pass through. So that's why anything you look at under a microscope has to be cut thin enough in order to be at least a little transparent.
All right, so I hope that was informative for you guys. Just make sure you're comfortable using a microscope. You'll be using it multiple times throughout the year. And the best thing to do is just be careful, be safe, take care of yourself, watch for any cords that are along the edges. Make sure that the microscope itself is far enough from the edge of the table so there are no obvious accidents that could occur. Just use common sense and, uh, and have fun with it. Hope you guys enjoyed the microscope use, and I will see you next time.